Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the recording of The Red Room, a mystery radio play. I am Katie Wells, Head of Education and Director of Artistic Administration at River City Theatre. For the past five Saturdays, our talented group of virtual summer camp actors, which consist of rising fourth through ninth graders, have come together virtually under the direction of Alex Funk and myself to adapt the script, develop unique characters, and to create this radio style performance for you. We are very proud of our actors and we hope you enjoy The Red Room. The Red Room. Characters. Natalia Kowalski, rich lady from Russia, selfish and dramatic, played by Miss Milana Arnold. Florence Henderson, Natalia's maid, nervous, played by Miss London Wilson. Charlotte Gray, American escort, demure and soft, played by Miss Courtney Gerke. Governor William Edwards II, rich politician, has affair with Mary, played by Mr. Whitman Sullivan. Lady Mary Walsh, daughter of French premier, egotistical and rude, played by Miss Prudence Stevenson. Georgia Adams, British detective, identical twin sister to Olivia, played by Miss Amara Scales. Olivia Adams, British detective, identical twin sister to Georgia, played by Miss Emily Sullivan. Lady Eleanor McClellan, Mary's Scottish cousin, played by Miss Noah Barry. Narrator, played by Mr. Alex Funk. Setting, the reception room, the red room, of the French premiere the evening before the international signing of a peace treaty. This room is directly adjacent to the ballroom where a large masquerade party is being held. Winter, 1878. This play was first written by the Theater Styles class at Miller South School for the Visual and Performing Arts in 2019. The play was then adapted into a radio play and produced by Rubber City Theater's Summer Conservatory in 2020. The show was recorded on July 18th, 2020 and presented on July 20th, 2020. It was directed by Alex Funk and Katie Wells. Act one, scene, a small room to the side of the ballroom, the red room. At rise, Florence is seen entering the room. She is nervously pacing. She's going to fire me. That's probably why she wants to talk to me. I shouldn't have eaten that piece of bread. Natalia, entering through a door from the ballroom. Lord, you're here. Oh, you all right? Ma'am? Florence, I, I think my husband is cheating on me. What? I just saw him dancing in the ballroom with that Mary Wolf. Oh, thank goodness. Excuse me? Sorry, Mom. This might sound odd, but I like you to spy on Mary Walsh and my husband. Yes, Mom, but why? I don't have time to answer these types of questions, Florence. Do you understand? Y yes, Mom. Florence hesitates, then exits to the ballroom. Natalia gets up and moves to the bar at the far end of the room and pours a drink. She downs it. There are some inaudible sounds of two people arguing loudly outside the door to the red room. They get louder as they get closer. There is a sound of a slap. Then the door opens and Mary enters. She slams the door and angrily huffs to the couch and sits on the far end of it, like a child who was just told no. Natalia watches this and downs a second drink. She knows who has entered the room. She pours two more drinks and moves silently and cautiously to the chair nearest Mary. Natalia sits. Men. Men. 
I really don't know why I put up with him. Put up with who? My husband, of course, Fergus. Sets nitwit out there who thinks he can tell me what to do and how to behave. I am the Premier's daughter. This is my party too. I can do what I want. Of course. Mary, don't you think that... I didn't ask for your opinion, Natalia. Here. Maybe you need this. Hands her a drink. I don't think what you did to your husband was very nice, Mary. That's interesting coming from you, Ma Natalia. Takes a sip of the drink. I know you kissed my husband! Well, what did you do that would make your husband want to kiss me? Are you admitting to it? Who said I was admitting to anything? Just tell me the truth. Why would you care? You don't even love him. Shut your mouth before I do it for you. You wouldn't. I've done some pretty messed up things to get here. So don't test me. Natalia exits, slamming the door behind her. Whatever you say, your majesty. Florence enters without Mary noticing. She goes to the drink table and appears to be looking for something. Oh, good evening, Mom. I'm just getting Miss Kowalski's drink. Picks up a bottle of wine and begins to exit. Oh, I've been looking for that. Grabs the bottle of wine. Actually, that's Miss Kowalski. I'm sure she'll be fine without it. Please give it to me, Mom. I can't afford to be fired right now, especially after everything that's happened tonight. What happened? I'm not supposed to speak about it. I wouldn't tell anyone. I am the hostess of this party. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. I'm not taking any chances. Forgive me, Mom. Fine. Have it your way. Thrusts bottle at Florence, who almost drops it. Thank you, Mom. Florence exits. Mary goes to a mirror and is fixing her mask. William enters from the ballroom, taking off his mask. Not noticing Mary, William pours a drink. Governor, Governor Edwards? William, quickly putting the mask back on. Yes. Turns to Mary. Oh, it's you. I've been looking for you all night, Governor. We need to talk about my payments. Payments for what? What are you talking about? Don't play as a fool with me, William. You know what I'm talking about. Listen, Mary. I've already said I'm done with this. Is that so? Yes. Yes, it is. Mary, walking towards the ballroom. All right, then. It's not my problem to deal with. I'll just have my father send the letter to your queen. No. Wait. Have you come to your senses, then? Are you ready to pay? What choice do I have? You don't. Why are you still doing this? It was five months ago. Do you not understand? I don't care at all. I've already moved on. Then let's just stop this. We can both move on and pretend none of this ever happened. That sounds wonderful. Except for the fact that it doesn't benefit me at all. You don't need my money. You're right. I don't need it. I just want it. William, slamming drink on the table. I'm done with this. Tell your father, tell the queen. I have important things to do here. There's a treaty that must be signed. Excellent. I don't care. Have a good evening, Governor. Charlotte comes into the room, appearing to be looking for something. Mary is sitting on a chair on the other side of the room, looking at a bottle of wine. Excuse me. Um, it's Maddie. Uh, yes, uh, Mary. Do you know where the drinks are? Oh, is it right over? Who are you? Oh, my name is Charlotte Gray. I'm here with Charles. Charles? When he said he picked a random woman from the street, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> uh, well, he didn't exactly find me on the street. And he said he would pay me if... I know, I know. Charles told me all about it. Well, with the whole peace treaty business, I guess it is only appropriate to bring a foreigner to, to the ball. It shows diplomatic opportunity. Wait, a uh, uh, peace treaty? You didn't know about the peace treaty? The treaty between half the European countries? That's what we're all here for. What else are you going to tell me? You didn't even buy your own dress? Well... Oh, how unfortunate. 
Mary walks over to Charlotte and puts a hand on her shoulder. It's okay, darling. Not as many people can be as lucky and important as us. Hey, uh, I'm important here. I mean, what about the treaty? Oh, you can leave after the ball. You won't be needed for the treaty. Americans need no part, part in European affairs. Mary starts walking away from the chair. What do you mean I won't be needed? <laughs> you Americans think you're so great. Just because you walk into a room doesn't mean you're the center of attention. Charlotte starts walking out of the room. I don't need to be the center of attention. And I don't like what you implied earlier about me. I can't believe this. You can't just... The drinks are over there, Charlotte. Charlotte doesn't say anything as she angrily walks out of the room. Eleanor enters. Eleanor! Oh, Mary, it's so nice to see you. Who's my favorite cousin? Oh, I've been fine, but that's neither here nor there. What are you doing here? I don't remember seeing you on the guest list. Really? That's odd. I received an invitation from Fergus. Ah, yes. I forgot that I'd let him invite some people. Well, it was good seeing you. Mary begins to walk away, but Eleanor grabs her by her wrist. Let me go. Are you insane? I need to talk to you. Let me go. Just listen to me, Mary. It's about what happened in the past. I don't have a grudge. I got over it. I have a very loving husband who cares about me deeply. Oh, you mean Henry? I bet you're having a great time with him. Mary wrenches this away from Eleanor. I am. Last time we spoke, you told me that you didn't want to marry him and you wanted to, to marry Fergus. Oh, and what did you say again? That I was just a tramp that wanted money. Mary, what I said was wrong. And I'm sorry. If there's anything... If I see you mingling with Fergus, you're dead. Charlotte, entering. Mary, I need to talk to you. I resent the fact that you think I'm not needed here. Natalia enters with Florence behind her. William sneaks in and heads to the bar. Florence has something to say to you, Miss Walsh. I really don't have anything to say, Miss Kowalski. Well, I do. I know you kissed my husband, and I know you won't admit it. But my husband is not the only one who you've had affairs with. And you had the nerve to assume that I was a loose woman? How, how could you? Mary, you made a promise to me that you'd be loyal to Fergus. I thought you changed. I found wine. I'm sure you've had an affair with William too. William hits his head on the bar as he crawls out from looking for a glass. Uh, Mary, how could you? Why did you tell her? I thought we had a deal. Ah, that's my case. Everyone begins to argue with each other. <laughs> Mary sits on the couch. She looks uncomfortable fanning herself, coughing, <laughs> She soon falls on the floor. Mari, is she dead? She's probably just drunk. Wait, I'll check. William kneels on the ground and checks Mary's pulse. Everyone waits in anticipation to hear the results. She's dead. Everyone dead. <gasps> Eleanor falls on the ground and starts sobbing. Mary! <laughs> Lights out. Act two. At rise, Natalia, Charlotte, Florence, Eleanor and William sit or stand in different parts of the room, not talking. Duh! We've been here for an hour! Your wanting won't help. I can't believe Mary's dead. Don't bring it up again. We've been talking about it for an hour. Please. Uh, one of us is the murderer. Yeah, we know. Natalia pointing to Charlotte. She was by the drinks. She is the murderer. Charlotte what? approaching Natalia. What? I would never. Mary was with your husband all night. Natalia meeting Charlotte in the center. How dare you? You're just jealous. Enough! Let's all be rational. It, it might have just been a mistake. An accident? She collapsed after taking your... Drink! Turning to Florence. Are you going to say anything? Are you dumb? Oh, I forgot. 
you're just a maid. You aren't even allowed to talk to me. Florence slaps <laughs> Eleanor. Charlotte, coming to Eleanor. Oh, are you okay, Lady McClellan? Natalia, grabbing Florence's arm. I'm so sorry. She didn't mean it. They begin to walk away. I wouldn't stop you, Mum, because I am a good person. Natalia continues walking. Olivia, entering the room. Good evening. I'm, I'm Detective Adams. I am here to investigate the murder of Mary Walsh. Where's the body? Over there, ma'am. Points off stage. You ruined the body? Had to. It was making us sick to look at her. Charlotte nearly fainted. Charlotte gives her a nasty look. Olivia exits, all wait with bated breath. Olivia returns. It looks like she's been dead for at least an hour. We know. I'm going to investigate the other rooms. You all stay here. Olivia exits. My apologies. She was the only detective I could find that was available. Well, I'm sure she would do a fine job. Georgia, entering. Greetings, I'm Detective Adams. Do any of you know where the body is? I'm here to investigate the apparent murder of Mary Wilson. I'll do a double take. Wait a minute. Didn't you just ask us that a second ago? I just got here. What do you mean? Olivia walks in the room. After looking at the body, I've concluded... He's Georgia. There's two of them. I thought I only hired one of you. Which one of you is in charge? I am. I am. Glares at each other. Olivia, we decided this a month ago. I was born three minutes older than you. So I'm the detective. I never agreed to that. Yeah, well, I never agreed to have you as a sister. That's enough. Georgia and Olivia start fighting. Liar, idiots, Eleanor. Ladies, please. You're here to investigate this case. Now, please stop fighting. Fine. What was happening before she died? After the party, we all gathered in this room. We all started arguing. The next thing we knew, Mary was on the ground unconscious. Interesting. Where's the glass he drunk out of? Right here. This might take some time. Feel free to relax. You are all suspects. No one leaves this room. Olivia exits the room and closes the door. Georgia looks around a corner of the room. I'm going to go look for clues. I don't think these detectives will help us find any evidence. Good idea. What is that wretched smell? It's coming from over here. I'm lead detective here. I think I should be the one to decide what it is. I think I know what it is. Well, what is it? Bleach. <gasps> I think that it was Florence. She was the one who passed out the drinks after all. Well, isn't it a little suspicious that William constantly smells like bleach? Oh, I, I just spilled some wine. I was cleaning it up. How do we know you aren't lying? And what about Charlotte? Walking to Charlotte. Do you even know what this is all about? Don't point your finger at me. I have no idea what is going on. Remember, Natalia? I was picked off the street. That makes her even more suspicious. We should really stop fighting. After all, the detectives have arrived. We just have to wait here patiently. Florence sits down. William, Charlotte, Eleanor, and Natalia sit quietly. After a moment, Natalia stands up. This is ridiculous! 
Why am I here? I didn't kill anyone. Walking to the door. I'm leaving. William, standing up. Hold on. The detective said no one could leave. Georgia, popping up from behind the bar. That's right. You dare say that. But surely you wouldn't question who has the higher authority. I order you to let me out the door! With all due respect, ma'am, you are a key suspect in a murder case, and I'm a detective. I think I I want you here. Fine! Florence, go get me that bottle of wine I brought. Yes, Mom. Florence goes to the bar and grabs the bottle of wine. Georgia grabs the bottle, too. The two stare at each other and start a very subtle tug-of-war game with the bottle. Florence eventually wins the war and pours Natalia a glass of wine. Natalia takes one drink and spits it out. This, this is not the drink I brought. Florence picking up the glass. I'm sorry, Mom. It was with your cup. Sorry, Mom. Olivia enters through the door with Mary's glass. I believe I found the cause of death. I found traces of bleach in the drink. I have I decided have to run some interviews with you all one by one. Hey, I was going to say that. And since none of you can leave the room for obvious reasons, we will be conducting interviews here. I suggest you get your story straight. Georgia, grabbing Florence's arm. We'll start with you, Miss Florence. Oh, all right then. Do you have to use such force? Olivia takes out a notepad. Force is sometimes necessary in these situations. Of course, you wouldn't know, being a maiden or... Florence glares at Georgia, who is oblivious to it. When exactly did you arrive here? Around five. I don't remember exactly. It was some short time after the party had begun. I assume you arrived with Mrs. and Mr. Kowalski? Yes, I did. And were you in here when Mary collapsed? Yes, I was. Did you speak to, to Mrs. Ross at all before her death? I did, yes, but... I wouldn't say it was much of a conversation. I just ran into her while getting up. Olivia and Georgia look up. You were just... Just getting a bottle of wine for Lady Natalia. Hmm, okay. Wait, I must tell you that. Yes? It's about Lady Natalia. Natalia perks up as soon as she hears her name. Well, I should tell you that Lady Natalia's husband has been cheating on her with Mary. She made me spy on them, and I couldn't say no, or else I would have been fired. I never did such a thing! She's making up stories. Do not interrupt the interview, lady. One more question. Do you think these things will make her a murderer? Uh, I don't know. I insist on having my interview next. I need to clear my name. Lady Eleanor was scheduled to be next, but this will do. You may sit down, Lady Nat Natalie. Natalia grabs Florence's arm and yanks her forcefully out of the chair. She sits dramatically in it. So, Mrs. Kowalski, did you come here with anyone? Yes, my husband, Luther. Do you believe that he was cheating on you? He wouldn't. <laughs> Would he? I did see him flirting with, with another woman. And this woman was married, correct? Yes. Interesting. Don't interesting me. I saw Florence handling the bleach. Isn't that enough evidence? Florence, standing up. I'm done dealing with you and your problems. I know my maid, but that doesn't make me your slave. If you say one more word to me, 
I will fire you. I can't keep doing this. Stop pushing me around like I'm nothing. You don't give me any respect. I'm a human too. Shame on you for speaking like that to me. I'm afraid I have to let you go. Good riddance. Florence walks back to her seat and takes off her apron and throws it on the floor. All right, then. Lady Eleanor, you're up next. Okay. Wait, that's it? That's all you needed from me. That's right. You answer all of our questions. No. All right, then. Natalia rises and glides back to the couch where she was sitting. So you're related to Mary, yes? I was. How? I was her cousin. We got along very well and she was very sweet. Have you ever, have you always felt this way? It's complicated. You see, when we were kids, we were best friends. And then Mary met her husband, Fergus. We both loved him dearly. For some time, we thought about who would marry him, and he chose Mary. I was very upset, but I eventually forgave her, and I met my husband, Henry. I got an invitation from Fergus a month or so ago. And did you see Mary at all before her death tonight? No, not until she died. A lie. You were here before Florence and I came in. Oh, yes. I was getting a glass of wine. Hmm, all right. We have finished the interview. Okay. Can I step outside for a second? I'm, I'm still upset about the whole situation. Of course. No, you can't not. Olivia, we, they have to stay here. All right, just sit over there. Charlotte, you're up. Before I start, I just want to say I was picked off the street and taken here. I have no clue what's going on or why we are all here. Everyone stares at her. Okay. Did you talk to Mary at all tonight? Well, I did have a conversation with her at the beginning of the party. What's the problem? Is that a piece of paper? Uh, no. Uh, yes. May I have it? No, it's really not important. No. If it's n not important, why can't I see it? Fine. Holding out letter to Georgia. Georgia, opening letter and reading. To one Mary Wilsh. Olivia, grabbing letter from Georgia. I believe I should, I should read it. To Mary Walsh. Georgia grabs letter. I still read it. I had it first. Charlotte, grabbing letter. I'll read it. Natalia, William, Florence, Olivia, Eleanor, and Georgia all watch Charlotte and listen carefully. To one Mary Walsh, December 16th, 1877. As promised, here's your payment for the month of December. I expect you'll be present at Premier Tyrell's ball next week. I will deliver your next payment then. As always, I hope this resolves any issues. William Edwards II. William leaping up. What? I'm sorry, William. I had to. You really didn't. It, is my interview over? It is. Governor William, you are the last person. William walks up to the chair and sits. 
So, Governor, can you explain what that note was about? I'm afraid I cannot say. Sir, if you don't give the reason, we will have to assume that you were the one that murdered Mrs. Wills. I was paying Mary to keep a secret. What secret? I had an affair with Mary. She was blackmailing. Oh, oh my. What is wrong with you? Everyone calm down. He was getting blackmailed. It's fine. Uh, thank you, Natalia. Fine. It's anything but fun. You're just calm about it because you've probably seen it plenty of times. You are a criminal, young lady. I wish I'd never met you. I would have never been stuck in this mess, which probably happened because of you. Stop it. You guys are acting like children. An innocent person has been killed, and you guys are focusing on this? We have gone through every interview, and we believe we have the culprit. We do? Yes, we do. We believe that... Lights out. Lights up on the same moment. The scene continues as if no time has passed at all. We believe that... We believe that Florence murdered Mary Walsh. <gasps> I knew it! Hey, I was supposed to announce it. The police will... The police will arrive shortly to take her away. Florence? I can't believe it. What? Really? Wait a second. That doesn't seem right. Are you questioning my theory? Um... I have gone through all my notes, and that doesn't seem to add up. This is your first case. No, it is. No, it's not. Check your notes again. What do you mean that doesn't seem right? Either she did it or she didn't. Hold on. Flip the notes. Everyone waits patiently. No, I was, I was right. It is Miss Florence Henderson. I'm not the murderer. I would never. How could you even think that? How could you do this? I promise, Lady Eleanor, I didn't do this. I'm sure it was just a mistake. Right, detectives? I'm afraid not, miss. I didn't hire a murderer. My husband is in charge of that business. I would never. Of course you did. All the evidence points to you. You're the one passing out the drinks. And he had bleach. You guys said it right out of my mouth. I bet that was why William coincidentally smelled like bleach. That was an accident. I, I found it under the table after spilling some wine on my shirt. So Florence put it under there after putting it in the drinks. Wait a second. Did anyone else drink even a sip tonight? Everyone shakes their head no. I don't remember drinking any. Why do you ask? It's not what you think. I was just thinking. What if all the drinks were poisoned? Mary was the only one drinking, and she was the only one who died. 
So that needs. We could have all died? Who would do such a thing? She would. Eleanor points at Florence. Maybe I was the mother. I... She just confessed? I didn't mean it. I didn't. Or maybe I did. I swear. Whatever I did, it was an accident. Georgia pulls out a set of handcuffs. I'll take her outside. What will happen? Will she be hung? No need to worry, sir. She'll have a trial and end up in prison soon. Good riddance. Georgia takes Florence off stage. You have to believe me. I'm innocent. It was one of them. No. Florence exits. Well then, I'm sorry for the inconvenience tonight. You can all leave. Thank goodness this is all over. Do you think she was right? Ooh. Florence, with the whole I'm innocent thing. Maybe they took away the wrong person. You, you are not accusing one of us to be the murderer, right? We all just went through this. Haven't we all had enough? Nonsense. All the clues led to Florence. Eleanor puts a hand on Natalia's shoulder. Don't worry about it, Natalia. I'm sure you're right. Anyway, Charlotte, is Charles taking you home? <laughs> Actually a funny story. Turns out I wasn't good enough for him. He stopped talking to me halfway through the party. That's why I came in here. I thought this was an exit. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm fine. We Americans are hardy people. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Miss Gray, I expect an apology. Oh? Uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry about revealing your secret. How genuine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no need to worry about that. We should go. The evening has been quite exciting, and I think we all need a break. I agree. We should go. Even though I despise Florence, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Eleanor almost pushes Natalia off stage while Charlotte and William walk off. You see those, dear? It would be easier if you just accept the truth. You are in shock from this evening. Yes, but... Now not another word. I will visit you tomorrow to see how you are doing. Oh, I think I left my purse inside. I'll be right out. Eleanor's expression changes as she walks up to Olivia sitting on the couch. You didn't have to be so obvious! We have a life too, Miss McClellan. Georgia re-enters. Georgia re-enters. And what about her? I thought you had a tight rein on your sister.
Me? What did I do? You almost let your sister give everything away. But enough of that. The plan worked out anyway. As promised, here's your payment. Did everything go fine outside? Yes, she been taken away. And what about here? Yes, they didn't expect a thing, except for that Natalia. But if she causes any us any trouble, I'll fix her myself. As agreed, we will not speak of tonight's events or the crimes we've committed. Yes, ma'am, we understand. Good. Lady Eleanor, are you coming? Um, yes. To the detectives. Not a word. Eleanor exits. Do you think she suspects something? Not a thing. Tosses the bag of money up in the air and catches it. You have all the editing. Every, every last word and deed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, we make a pretty good team. I was just about to say that. Lights go out. End of play. <laughs>